G'day guys, Shane here today. We are doing some long exposure photography with three different phones. We're gonna use the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the Huawei P40 Pro, and the S21 Ultra from Samsung. Let's get into it. So for this channel, we've got a Facebook group. It's called the Bloody Legends Facebook group. I'll, I'll link it down the bottom there and you can go ahead and join and show us your photography and well, basically learn from each other. But over there on that group there, I've done a few videos with even longer on the iOS and the guys who have Androids are kind of going, what about us? Well, today I'm gonna to try and do some long exposure photography with the Samsung Galaxy S21. We already know that even longer can do it for iOS and the P40 Pro has got an inbuilt system. I really wanted to see if I can get some good long exposures out of all three of those phones. Now for long exposure photography, we want to have a subject that is stationary and something that is also moving. And it works really well with waterfalls and beaches and things like that, but where I am, I'm in Outback Australia and basically there's nothing like that here. So I'm gonna wait for a windy day where it's a bit of overcast. You see some clouds out there behind me. They're moving and they're moving pretty quick. So that gives us an opportunity now to do some long exposure photography using the sky as the moving subject. And I'm going to use this tree right here as a stationary subject. For long exposure photography, we're going to need a tripod. That's pretty much all you need, a tripod and a phone holder. Um, I've done a video on about tripods before, I'll link it up the top there, and you can see what sort of thing is going to be suitable for you within the budget that you have. But you're going to have to have it, you're going to have to have a tripod. There's no other way around it. These photos take from five seconds all the way up to 10 hours long, and you physically just cannot hold your phone still for that amount of time. You just can't, don't care who you are. So you're gonna need a tripod, you're gonna need a phone holder, and when we get to the S21, we may need something else. But hang around, we'll see if we can get it to work without it. First up, we're gonna try the iPhone, and we'll put it, that's not the iPhone. I have too many bloody phones. That's the iPhone. <clears throat> we'll put it into the holder, turn that on, open him up, lock into the, the phone holder. And I'm going to try lock photos because this is the easiest way to do long exposures with an iPhone to turn on live photo touch for focus hit the shutter and that's it we go now into the gallery and with iOS 15 it's a little bit different I can swipe up on iOS 15 I'm side on at the moment so it's not going to show us quite the same thing but you get the idea so beside us at the moment it gives you all the metadata that's something with iOS 15 that well it's new and it shows you everything about what you just did with that photo. But that's not what I want for this demonstration here. What I want is, scroll that down, in the top left hand corner now it's got live, it's got an arrow next to it now, it's gonna go down, hit long exposure, and this is now going to convert that photo to a long exposure photo, just like we always have. And too bad, there's a little bit of movement in the cloud. What we'll try now is even longer. The app even longer. That's the photo I just took before while I was testing because I know it's going to work. And uh, I'll just do it for 30 seconds. No. It's moving pretty quick, so we'll do it for 20 seconds. We'll leave it at 20 seconds. Um, touch for focus on the tree. Hit the shutter. It's going to count down 3, 2, 1, and then take the photo. And now we just wait for 20 seconds. Hence the tripod. The resulting image is exactly what I would expect to get out of that app. It's a bloody good app. It's probably the best app I've seen for long exposure photography. Let's try the S21 Ultra. Now the S21 Ultra obviously doesn't have uh, like a live photo as such. It doesn't just doesn't do that. It, it hasn't got a plethora of apps because Androids just don't. The app developers, well, they tend to focus on Apple devices because there's only like four a year that come out. So there's not a lot of devices to adapt your app to. But with the Android, there's like hundreds to thousands of different phones that come out each and every year, and they just don't have the time, I guess, to put their, well, their, their resources into developing an app for each one of those sort of phones. So um, what we'll do, we're gonna try a couple of things here first. I'll just set this into the, the phone holder. And that's the, that's the uh, composition that, pretty much the same composition as what I had for the Apple device. Um, a regular photo is, I can decrease or increase the, the uh, shutter, uh, the um, exposure, but it's not going to do too much. That photo is really not going to achieve much. We're going to try and go into pro mode because that's where we're going to get a longer exposure. The downside obviously is that I can't adjust the aperture, so I need a way to make it darker. And like right now, that's, that's just blown out, it's way too bright. That's, that's only at 1 45th of a second, so that's, 
That's still pretty quick. Uh, how are we gonna get around this? ISO is way down, it's on 50. I do have a tool here that we could try. This is the Sandmark uh, variable ND filter. I'll try this. It may work, it may not. I suspect not, but you gotta try these things. Because you, know, you Android guys are really, really not happy that you can't do this. So where are we at here? We're at uh, ND64. There you go, it's made a pretty big difference. Now, if I change that shutter speed a little bit slower, yeah, <laughs> that's too that's too slow. So this is an ND64 filter. That's that's a that's a pretty good filter. I'll take a shot of that. And I just know that's not going to be long enough. So we've got to try a different option here. So what we'll do, get rid of that filter. Make sure there's no cars coming because I'm kind of in the middle of the road. Um, we're going to go back, we're going to try this app that one of you guys in that group has mentioned. And it's called Motion. <coughs> motion Blur, I think it's called. Mo no, Motion does light trails and motion blur. That's what it is. Um, but this thing can go all the way up to 20 minutes. 20 minutes for an Android is well, pretty cool. We're not going to do that here because, well, we don't have time. I'm going to bring that back to 20 seconds. That's what I did with the uh, even longer app. Bring it to 20 seconds. I'll touch there for focusing. I can see the clouds are moving in the frame of that, and I'll take that photo. So that's capturing the photo right now. What I've done with this app in the past is that it tends to take a long time to process that image as well. This is an Exynos version of the S21 Ultra. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but um, I'll take a photo for 20 seconds. It almost seems like it then processes again for 20 seconds. But it, it, here it is now, it's processing. And it just crashed. <laughs> oh, we'll try it again. I'm on 20 seconds. I've just fixed the start of the app again, hit the shutter, and off we go. We're capturing again for 20 seconds. It's, um, it's pretty rare that you get an app crash on the iPhone uh, for the same reasons that I just mentioned. This may not be all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> anyway, it might be the, the best couple of dollars I've ever spent so that you guys don't need to. This isn't doing a very good job. Um, but it's not often that you get a, a, a app crash on the iOS. They tend to do some pretty good um, testing. Not all apps, some apps just suck and they just crash all the bloody time. But this here is still processing, that's taking bloody ages. I don't think you need to sit around waiting for this, but that photo is looking, I don't think this is gonna work. I'm gonna keep on giving this a go and when I get a workable image, I'll come back to you. So right now, this is my seventh go at trying to get this to work. It's crashed so many freaking times. I've turned the sound recording off. I've closed every other app that's on this phone. <clears throat> so far, not that impressed. This is um, processing the last photo I'm taking. Hopefully this is the last photo that I'm taking. Well, I finally got it to work. Uh, the phone crashed a couple of times, the apps crashed a couple of times. I've tried it with the screen recording on so I can show you guys how it works. I finally got one of those to work, but the app crashed on me probably seven or eight, maybe even 10 times. I got sick of that. I'll, I wouldn't be buying that app if I was in a hurry, if I was you guys. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. I'm just taking photos of the, this thing's supposed to go for 20 minutes. I was using 20 seconds and it still wasn't working. I was shooting at 12 megapixels. You've got the option there to change the uh, resolution on that. It should be able to handle it. This is like the flagship phone. There's enough processing power in this phone to do what it wants to do. Uh, I'll show you what this looks like in just a second, but the results are, yeah. The next phone we're shooting is the Huawei P40 Pro. I was reluctant to buy this when, well, when I started this channel because it was just a Huawei and I didn't really know much about them and I couldn't even say it. But this has developed into what is, well, my favorite phone camera I've ever used. What this thing can do is just bloody amazing. It's a shame that it's a Huawei and you haven't got Google services. If you did, this would be my daily carry phone every bloody day. Now the Huawei phone, if you don't know, what we're trying to do here, it has a mode in the camera to do this. It's bloody amazing. I'll put this into the phone holder, I'll open up the camera, put in the phone holder, just set the composition so it's the same as what we had it for the other two phones, which is pretty well 
on the money there. So open up the camera and we'll go to more. And then you've got light painting. Is it light painting? Not really, but we're gonna to go to silky water. Second one from the top there, touch for focus and hit the shutter button. That's it. I don't need to do anything else. It's got a timer there and I'm gonna stop it when I wanna stop it. But I'll go for 20 seconds, just like we did for the other two phones, and we compare. We'll compare the pair. It's, um, it's as simple as that. It's good, good hardware in this phone. It's just a bloody ripper phone. That's 19, there's 20. I'll hit stop and we'll have a look. That's all three photos done now from three different phones. And we'll have a look at these. I'll edit them all up individually and you can see how they're going to look the best that I can get out of them. I know that two of them, from what I've seen so far, are just, mm, they're mint. They're really, really good. And the third one, for such a bloody expensive phone, it does some amazing things. And it is a fantastic camera in an S21, but this, the long exposure, ease of use, and when it comes to phone photography, it should be easy. That's the number one rule in my head, should be easy. Wasn't good. This is what it looks like. Now this is the best photo that I've got out of the S21 Ultra. Uh, using the uh, motion app and the way that it's blended it it just looks bad it looks like it's directly out of the 1980s Atari computer console it's like bad graphics in the computer game it's not good at all and to me that's that's really a shame because the camera system on the S21 Ultra is just bloody good it's a really really good camera but to be not able to do long exposure photography during the daylight, this like today, with this many cool features on so many different phones and so many good apps out there, well, I feel for you guys. You can do it, but it's not easy. You can set up the intervalometer app on that S21 Ultra and take a series of photos over, say, 20 seconds. I'm talking about oh, maybe 100 photos over that time put them all into Adobe Photoshop and blend them uh, with brightness and you're going to get a nice fake long exposure photo. That's essentially the way these other phones are doing it, just quicker and better and easier because they're bloody phones. You can do it, it's just not easy. Now the live photo from the iPhone really didn't shoot for that long so we don't have a lot of movement in the sky but the even longer photo, it looks like this and that's just bloody amazing. Really, really, really good app. You know I like it. Over there on that Facebook group that we've got, you know there's a lot of guys over there who are really enjoying this app as well. And lastly, that Huawei photo, it's dead set easy to do. It required virtually no editing, and it's an amazing photo. Like I said, if I could get Google services on that phone, I'd be a very, very happy man. That's a fantastic camera, and what it can do is just simply bloody amazing. That's it for today, guys. I'll see you later on the week for a review.